All right, the uh, most common question I usually get asked about tube flies is how you actually rig them. Now, there's a lot of videos out there, especially on YouTube, about how to rig a tube fly. It's not complicated. Uh, it can get complicated like anything, but if you start with your tube, now we're just going to pretend that this is actually a, a tube fly that's been tied and has all the feathers on and all that sort of thing. Okay, like this, for example. Okay, a tied pattern. This is just the bare tube. And simply the way it works is we take our line, our leader, and it goes through. You always have a melted lip on the front. It goes through the tube. Okay. And actually, before I even want to do that, I'll just pull that back out. I'll add my junction tube first. So on the back of the tube, this is the front, this is the back. On the back, I'll take my junction tubing. You'll notice this junction tube is actually a lot smaller diameter, or a little bit smaller diameter than the actual tube. Uh, this stuff's made out of silicone. It's our junction tubing, glow in the dark, this one. Uh, and all you have to do is kind of get the edge of it and push it on. It's kind of a push wiggle technique. And you can see it starts to wiggle itself on there. Now, how far you want to push it, it's kind of dictated by how how far back you went on your pattern with the fur and feather. I like to go almost a quarter inch if I can. Okay. Now you've got this your tube and then this big long junction tube. You're going to cut it. Now where you cut it depends on how far back you want your hook to rest in the pattern. If it's a long pattern you might want to cut it an inch. In this case I'm going to, you know, an average pattern. I'm going to leave about a quarter inch of the junction tube out the back now. Okay, so you've got your main tube and your junction tube. Now we'll go back to the line. Your leader is going to go through the front of your tube and it comes out at the back of the tube and junction tubing. Now all you do is just use your whatever knot you usually use and we just use a fisherman's knot where we go in and wrap it a few times around the main line probably five or six times I don't know if you can see that or not you just wrapped it around itself you can go back through the little eye So you've made a, a loop now, and then you're going to take that line and pull it back through the big loop. And so back through the big loop, and you're going to pull everything tight. Okay, so you've got basically a cinch knot, just like you would normally use, or just what I, I normally use anyway. Trim the edge. Now all you do is you bring your tube down. Now some guys like to free swing it or they don't even use a junction tube. It just swings free in the back. I like to cinch it up though. So your knot and your eye of your hook go into the back of the junction tube. And there it is now. So you've got your leader coming through through the main tube, through the junction tube. If I pull this apart again, you've got your knot on your hook, whatever knot you like, and then you just cinch it up into the junction tube. And you can see it just all sits nicely together. And then when you catch a fish, of course, most of the time, not all the time, I won't lie to you, most of the time the hook will dislodge and Instead of your nice, beautiful pattern that you spent so much time tying being in the fish's mouth, it'll be out of harm's reach just with the thrashing of the fish and things like that. It'll fly up the leader most of the time. Definitely way, way better than using your hook and having the, uh, a standard hooked fly in the fish's mouth. And that's it. That's the easy way to do a tube fly. Really, really simple. Basically everything goes through the tubes, tie a hook, and then just cinch it all up. And you're ready to go.